So it seems that the polar vortex hitting the United States these days applies to me too. We've got snow on the ground, but I'm still thinking about fertilizers for this coming spring. I thought I'd come to you with a video, more of an educational style video today about urea nitrogen. Urea is something that a lot of lawn enthusiasts just swear by and they put it down. Um, and there's some good reasons for that. I don't, I don't share those, I don't share those same feelings. Uh, it is good, but I don't swear by it. It's not the greatest thing since sliced bread. Let's talk about it just a little bit. When you might want to use it, and why you might want to use it. And, Dogs. If you ever hear growling, that's a big guy back there. Let's talk about when you might want to use it and uh, I don't know why, uh, why you might need to use a lot of it versus a little bit of it. Urea nitrogen is basically a synthetic organic. It's not an inorganic uh, source of water-soluble nitrogen. Uh, there are plenty of water soluble nitrogens that are just going to go onto the ground these things are completely uh there's no organics in them at all they just go on the ground uh, and just zap straight down to the root zones and the plant just absorbs them right away if you put too much or if there's too much water all of that nitrogen is going to continue to leach into the soil and become a problem lots of people don't like water soluble inorganic nitrogen sources so urea is a very common alternative that you're going to find in a lot of products. In fact, you're going to find it in a lot of products uh, coming from companies that are basically saying we provide slow release nitrogen that is uh, that's better for the environment. Uh, so the reason for that is a urea nitrogen is not an organic, uh, you know, it's not like a biosolid or it's not like uh, compost or manure or anything like that. Um, it is made, um, but it's made from organic materials. Uh, there are a number of nitrogen sources out there, but urea, when it goes down into the ground, uh, it needs to be broken down by microbes in the ground. So when we talk about like organics and biosolid fertilizers like melorganite or alternatives to melorganite, those things need to, I mean, we call those ultra slow release because they are pure organic materials. Uh, they need to be broken down by the microbes uh, for the nitrogen in it to be available to the plant and for the plant to absorb it and then eventually use it. The same goes for urea, except for it's a little bit easier for the process to happen, a little bit faster for the process to happen. There are little enzymes in healthy soil that will break down the urea and it will turn it into ammonia. Now, once ammonia... My dogs, man. Once ammonia is formed, if it's on the soil surface, that ammonia is going to get released into the atmosphere as a gas, and that's a bad thing. Let me move away from these dogs. So once that ammonia goes up into the into the air as a gas, um, it no longer can go into the plant. It can't continue this metamorphosis, uh, this chemical process uh, to become plant available and feed the plant. So that is a waste of material. That's why whenever you see a urea fertilizer or whenever you see someone applying a urea fertilizer or telling you how to do it, they always tell you to water it in or wait for rain. And quite honestly, you really should be just watering it in right away because the longer urea sits on the soil surface, the more of that um, volatization process. So uh, um, it's the volatization process. So the urea breaks down into ammonium and then it goes up into the atmosphere as a gas and you lose it. If you can water it into the ground, then that ammonia is going to bind itself to soil particles and become plant available at that point and then the root zone can actually absorb it in. If you can water it in right away, then you're actually going to be getting the full benefit. So basically what I'm saying here is if you cannot water in your fertilization application, then you should wait until you can. Now, as I'm talking to you, it is literally snowing around me. Cold temperatures have everything to do with the breakdown of urea into the lawn. So since this requires microbial life, much like a biosolid requires my microbial life or other kinds of organics, to break down urea 
Soil temperature really should be over 50 degrees. Now there's another process called denitrification that happens when you put down uh, urea onto a lawn. I still gotta get away from these dogs, they're just so loud. Um, as you put down the nitrogen on the lawn, the urea onto the lawn, if your lawn is not well aerated, meaning there's not very much oxygen in there, then that's what we call an anaerobic environment. It's like in composting, you have an aerobic environment. That's why we turn compost piles uh, to get them to heat up. And then there's the anaerobic. That's where basically no oxygen uh, infiltration is happening. Uh, it's a low oxygen environment. Different microbes are at work and they break down the urea a little bit differently. They break down that urea into a nitrite instead of an ammonia and that nitrite basically gets transformed into nitrogen gas which then goes up into the air. So basically in an anaerobic situation in your lawn where it's not well aerated, you don't really have good soil and the microbial life is at a bare minimum, then you are basically transforming the product that you purchased and spread on your lawn into a nitrogen gas which goes up into the air so you're not getting the full effect uh, you're getting a very small effect honestly of the urea going onto your lawn you're going to require a ton of it to actually get some sort of benefit whatsoever uh, that is not really the best idea now because we want to get this stuff down into the ground, we have to water it in. Now, the other main loss, the, the other main way that we lose nitrogen from urea when we put it down is by leaching. Now, if you don't know what leaching is, people throw that term around left and right. A lot of people don't fully understand what it is. Leaching is basically when the material, when the, when the nitrogen goes onto the soil surface and then water transfers it into, I'm moving my camera here with my hand, water transfers it down into the root zone and that's where the grass wants to bring it up. But leaching happens when the water continues to push it down beyond the root zone, below where the plants can grab it. So if your plant, for instance right now, all of my grass back here is dormant. I do have a little grass greenhouse kind of hidden under the snow back there. But other than that, all of my grass is obviously dormant and they will be for the next like month or two. Depending on where you live, your grass will be dormant for a while. So even if you're putting nitrogen down onto the ground, onto soil that is not frozen, your grass is still not gonna be picking it up because it doesn't want to, it's not awake yet. So if you put that urea down and you water it in and it goes past the root zone, or maybe you just over apply, the grass can only absorb so much at a time. If you dump like a gallon of water right on top of a sponge, it's gonna absorb some of that water and then the rest of it's gonna go all over the place. If you get too much water, it's going to push the urea lower than the root zone and faster than the plants can absorb it. And then it's gonna go into the ground system, another waste and a contaminant for the environment. So what does all this mean? Urea nitrogen can be slow release. It can come in another form, urea triazone. I think that's what it is. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, it's a slow release form of it. Um, it kind of, it kind of sits on the foliar level a little bit better. It's, it's a slow release of it to some extent. Uh, you're going to see that on the label of some products that'll say like 20% nitrogen and then somewhere in fine print it'll say X amount of nitrogen is uh, this urea triazone. Now there are other forms of slow, re slow release and they're actually technically not slow release, they're controlled release urea. These are the things that are polymer coated or sulfur coated. They're basically like little nuggets of urea that are encapsulated in a, uh, a membrane that slowly dissolves over time. Basically it slowly allows water to penetrate in and, and uh, break the whole thing down. So those are, I mean, it's still urea. It's just like, I don't know, it's like behind a shield, like uh, protective armor. So if you're gonna use that, it's still gonna break down slowly, uh, but the, the product is going to become available to the microbes slowly, and then the microbes still need to break that stuff down into ammonia uh, so that it can become plant available um, through the whole process that I previously explained. Urea is urea, it's just urea nitrogen. There's many different kinds of nitrogen. Urea is just one of them. It's the synthetic organic. Um, I prefer using as many organic products in my lawn as possible, but there's nothing wrong with urea at all.
If you're going to use it though, you should fully understand that you are going to benefit much more by focusing on the soil health before you fertilize the lawn. So when we're talking about the soil health, I'm talking about aerating your lawn. You don't want an anaerobic situation in your lawn. So pull out the core aerator, go rent one, hire a company to come over and do it. Uh, I use uh, liquid aeration as well as core aeration. Use those products. They are going to create little oxygen holes in your lawn that are going to create an, um, they're going to create an aerobic environment places where the microbes are going to work in your favor and not against you. As with many fertilizers, it's going to be in, in your best interest, significantly in your best interest, to wait till soil temperatures are up close to 50 degrees before you start applying anything like that because the microbial life in a lawn doesn't really get going until at least soil temperatures of 50 degrees, 50 to 55 degrees. It's kind of right in line with your pre-emergence schedule. Like when you put down your pre-emergence to stop the weeds later in the year, that's kind of when the soil life is getting back together. So if you're going to be putting down any sort of dethatching product or anything to feed the microbes, if you're putting down product to feed the microbes, the microbes are still asleep, what good is it going to do? You can throw a sandwich at me at three o'clock in the morning, but I'm not going to eat it because I'm asleep. Next in line, we got to talk about soil pH because soil pH has everything to do or has an, an awful lot to do with uh, your plants and your grasses of ability to use this uh, urea nitrogen. So if you're throwing down urea nitrogen, kind of like uh, the processes that I already mentioned, uh, soil pH that are this high, let's call it alkaline. If you get your soil pH above 6.5, which is still on the acidic side, um, you're going to start experiencing nitrogen losses as well. The higher that soil pH gets, the more the nitrogen losses uh, get. So let's say, for instance, you have soil pH is 7.5 to 8. For every unit of urea that you put down, only about 80% of that is going to be used. The other 20% is lost. So let's compound all of these things. Let's say you have a soil pH of like 7.5 and you have compacted soil uh, that it's not well aerated. It's an, it's an anaerobic situation. Uh, let's say you water uh, heavily and you get lots of leaching. I mean, you can be putting down an enormous amount of urea that is completely not used, especially if you're putting it down before your grass is able to absorb it. Now, having said that, soil temperature does make a difference as well. You are going to experience nitrogen loss at a smaller rate as the soil temperatures are lower. That's why some nitrogen packages out there, some urea products out there are gonna tell you to not apply the product uh, to the lawn if soil temperatures are, uh, or if your outside temperatures are very, very hot, like uh, 90, 95 degrees or whatever it would, whatever your package says. Because as the temperature goes up, that also contributes to nitrogen loss as well. So all of this is to say, if you're gonna be putting urea nitrogen down, truly the best times to be doing this is in the mid spring when the soil temperatures are still a little bit on the low side, your outside temperatures are still a little bit mild, your ground is still a little bit moist, uh, and you've had time to aerify the lawn. Microbes in the lawn have had enough time to wake up and become biologically active. Again, uh, their hibernation is basically over by mid spring. If you're gonna put this stuff down, you gotta get all that stuff in line. Otherwise, you're just not being uh, smart about what you're doing. There are important things to do in the lawn. Um, and some of them, and many of them have nothing to do with fertilizers. Do a soil pH test. I have a video that I've got linked down below where I talked about the soil pH test. Yeah, you can do a full soil analysis. I've got a big comparison of soil test analysis options on the market that's going to be coming out soon. Uh, but the pH is really going to give you I mean, that's really important. So go take a look at that. Consider liquid aerating your lawn. Consider core aerating your lawn. Consider doing a manual 
or a mechanical. It doesn't really matter. It just depends on how much money you want to spend or how much effort you want to put into it. No matter what, you got to get some cores in the ground. You got to get some oxygen flow going in there. Um, things like that are going to make a bigger difference to a lawn, especially a lawn that hasn't been cared for for a long time. Do those things first and then start working on your organics. So yes, everybody uses Melorganite and there's nothing wrong with that. There are going to be some alternatives to Melorganite out there. One of them I'm going to be featuring here very soon. Uh, it, uh, it's, basically, it's basically like a Melorganite. Uh, it's an organic fertilizer that uses a combination of products like bone meal and things like that. Uh, but it doesn't contain phosphorus, which is a good thing uh, because phosphorus is also another ground contaminant and it is frequently over applied to lawns. Now, if you've got a really good looking lawn, you've cared for it for a while and you've done all of these like uh, these fundamental steps before fertilizing, then yeah, there are going to be some good urea products out there. Um, and I'll probably touch on those in some future videos. This has turned into be a much longer uh, video than I ever thought it would be. Uh, there's an awful lot to say and this is just one very specific kind of fertilizer and it's just nitrogen. So uh, anyway, I hope you took something out of this video that's interesting and helpful. Uh, there's tons more that I could say. I could just like talk your ear off. Uh, I hope you like this video. Hit the button if you did. And I hope to see you in another video down the road. Maybe one where I don't have snow on the ground.